Good afternoon, guys. So in this lab, we're going to configure together BTP and DTP. So basically, the computer networking is a system in which multiple computers are connected to each other to share information and resources. They shared resource from one computer to another computer system. It creates files and store them in one computer, access those files from other computer connected over the network. Connect a printer, scan, et cetera, to one computer within the network and let other computers of the network use the machines available over the network. So VTP, VTP, which stands for VLAN Choking Protocol, is a protocol which is used to share VLAN information within a domain among connected switches. That is a Cisco proprietary protocol that propagates the system of virtual local area network, which is VLAN. On the network local area network, BTP carries VLAN information to all the switches in a VTP domain. For example, Suppose you have multiple VLANs that you need to create in your network, but you don't want to go to every single switch and create these VLANs. So you turn on VTP, you just create the VLANs on the switch and you configure the right settings. VTP also propagate these VLANs to the other switches to that set that are set the client mode. So we can say except to every little overlap, they are independent for each other. But if you have BTP domains configured on two switches, a domain mismatch, then this affect the DTP ability to negotiate choking between them. Now, DTP, let's try to explain this a little bit before we start the lab. So DTP, which stands for Dynamic Choking Protocol, is a proprietary networking protocol developed by Cisco Systems for the purpose of negotiating choking on a link between two VLAN, the worst switches, and negotiating the type of choking and capsulation to be used. Choke negotiation are managed by DTP only if the port is directly connected to each other. For example, suppose you have to automatically set up choking interface on one switch. When the other side is requesting a choke, you turn your DTP, which is dynamic choking protocol, by using the right settings. You'll be able to automatically set an NFS to choke mode if it's connected to other switches. So with, VT, with VTP, which is choking, which is um, stand for VLAN Choking Protocol, and DTP stands for Dynamic Choking Protocol. VTP is a protocol used to share VLAN information within domain among connected switches. DTP is a protocol used to negotiate choking between switch port and either end of a leg. VTP is, res is responsible for synchronizing the VLAN database across multiple switches. DTP tries to make sure that on the link that interconnects two switches, both 
ports operate in the same mode, either uh, access or trunk. PTP tries to make sure that all switches in the VLAN domain have an identical VLAN databases and propagates any changes to it. DTP allows two interconnected switches to negotiate the operating mode of the link. VTP requires a choke ISL or that one that one Q in order to send BTP frame. DTP is not required a form of, uh, to form a chunk. You can manually establish a chunk with switch port mode, chunk and switch port negotiate is configured on the chunk interface. So enough lecture. Let's just go ahead and start getting our hands dirty with packet tracer and start our configuration with VTP and DTP. So basically, guys, we already have all the um, packet tracer connected together. Let's just make this a little bit bigger so we can see. And then we can start our lab and start getting our hands dirty on the configuration together. So first of all, what we're going to do So we already have all the switches connected, right? Now, what we do is dynamic trunk, trunk in protocol. DTP managed the trunk link between Cisco switches. Currently, all the switch ports are in the default trunk in mode, which is dynamic auto. In these steps, we will check the choking mode to dynamic desirable for the link between switches, switch one and switch two. For all the link between switches one and three, and the link will be set to a static trunk. Use VLAN 999 as the native VLAN to this topology. So enough talking. Let's go ahead and pull switch one, which is this switch here. CLI. Let's make this bigger so everybody can see. And uh, for this to NF, this is enable mode, conf T. And now we could do at get zero one, right? We could do switch port mode dynamic desirable. So now, we have done this now for the trunk link between switch one and switch two. We can configure a static trunk link on gigabit NFS01 NFS on switch one. So we have switch one here, right? We, all, we already have switch one here. So what we can do is we could one step out and do. And a face, let's just do a up hour and see if we can find it. Right? Let's just change this to two, enter, and then we could do switch port mode, which we had that here. Switch port mode. We're going to change this desirable dynamic into chunk. Okay. So now we could do, now we're going to pull switch three and do the same thing. So that's switch one, and that's switch two, and he, that goes switch three. Let's go, make this bigger. Right. So now, guys, we do enable conf, oh, sorry. Conf, oh. so conf T, and then, what we can do in switch three, we could say NFS tab gig zero slash two, right? We could do switch port mode chunk, right? So now 
If you verify cho the choking is enabled, we could do, let's verify, so we could say do show and chunk. Do show. So now you could see that the native villain one and we could con we could we, we, we could see that the configuration for village 99, 999 as the native villain or full click on switch one two. Right? So the native villain one. Now let's check it for VLAN um, on switch one. So as we are already on the configuration mode, we could just type do in front of the comments so we wouldn't get no, um, see if we, if it give it to us. Okay, so it doesn't give it to us. So we got to type the whole thing, chunk. Do show, oh, sorry. So do show and TR, see if it's taken. It. Yes, it does take it. So now we could see, right? So we have the gigabit, gigabit NFS zero, zero slash one is on desirable mode chunking. And and port two is on 802.1Q chunking, right? So now let's continue with our configuration. So what we could do, we already on switch one, we'll be doing we can do, let's accept one out and get into configuration mode. We could do add range gig zero slash one to two, right? We could do switch, oh, sorry, switch port chunk native VLAN 999, enter, right? So now, if you were to check the message that you receive from switch one, you will get the native VLAN mismatch discover on gigabit internet zero two. So now let's see, on switch two, and switch three, we can configure VLAN 999 as the native VLAN. Now, to verify choking is successfully, we could configure all the switches. So you would, so you should be able to ping from switch. You should be able to ping one switch from another switch as the topology is showing. So now, on the configuration, we could configure and verify. Switch one will be configured as the VTP server, and switch two will be configured as the VTP client. All the Cisco switches will be configured to be in the VTP domain CCNA and be used the VTP password Cisco. So now, guys, the VLANs can be created on the VTP server and distributed on the switches in the VTP domain. In this part, we will create three new, three, uh, three new VLANs, I mean, on the VTP server, S switch one. These VLANs will be distributed to switch two using the VTP observe how the transparent VTP mode behaves. So enough talking. On, we're gonna configure switch one as the VTP server in the CCNA domain with the Cisco password all lowercase. So let's go ahead and start the VTP on switch one. Which switch are we in right now? So it's switch one. Let's just exit out one. So in there, we could say V VTP mode server. Enter. Right. So what it says, settings, you see this? Settings device to VTP server mode. Now let's go ahead and configure the CCNA as the VTP domain name. Let's do all power 
we could do VTP domain. Oh, sorry. All power, we could do VTP domain and all uppercase C, C, N, A. Enter. I get that right? VTP domain. Oh, I'm sorry. So instead of mode here, yeah, we should say VTP domain. So I'm sorry for the typo here. I'm being lazy. Domain. What am I doing? Um, bang, bang, bang. Okay, let's go. VTP. Let's say domain. Domain. Bingo. It says changing VTP domain name from null to CCNA. Right? So that's what we needed. Now let's continue. We're going to configure Cisco as the VTP password. Let's go ahead and all power. Let's just, just to avoid confusion. We could say VTP, let's say P tab, and now Cisco, all lowercase, is the password of the VTP. It says that settings, settings device, VLAN database password to Cisco, right? So, so far, so good. Now, on step so what we're going to do, we're going to verify the VTP on switch one, which we already hear. So what the command to use is, let's try do this. Since we already have the configuration, but we could say do show VTP status. Am I correct? Right. So we check the status. As you could tell, the VTP operating mode is on server, and the VTP domain name is CCNA, right? So, so far, so good, guys. Now, let's go ahead. We can add switch two and switch three to the VTP domain. Now, before switch two and switch three, we'll accept the VTP advertisements from switch one. They must belong to the same VTP domain. So what, what I mean is that we're going to have to configure switch two as the VTP client with CCNA, as the VTP domain name and Cisco as the VTP password. Now remember that the VTP domain names are all lowercase. So now enough talking, let's go ahead and pull switch two and start getting our hands dead. So that's switch three. Let's go ahead and pause switch two. CLI and make this bigger. Enable mode, conf T. Now what we do on switch two is we're gonna say VTP, V, oh, sorry, VTP mode client. And settings device to VTP client mode. Get this message here, right? So now let's do VTP domain. Sorry, VT, oh, VT, yep, VTP domain as what? As CCMA, right? Let's make this CCMP since this is a CCMP lab. CCMP. Okay, so changing the VTP domain name from now to CCMP, correct? Tell you what, let's make it CCNA since we already made the, the other one. So let's say VT, VTP, VTP domain, C, oh, so that's all power, and VTP domain, let's make it CCNA. See what's going to say. Okay, send it to, yeah, from CCMP to CCNA, right? So now let's make the VTP password. So VTP, VT, oh, sorry, VTP password, VTP password, please call, and it's all lowercase, right? Bingo. Now, to verify the VTP, we could do, do show VTP password. Uh, see, password, I'm lazy. Do show also oh, passport instead of password. Do 
do show VTP password. So you see now it says, let's make it big to see. And that's the password for VTP that we configured. Now, on switch two, that's where we are right now. What we're going to do is, we already did that. Now, we're going to configure switch three to be the CCNA VTP domain with the VTP password Cisco. Switch three will be set in the VTP transfer mode, right? So let's go ahead and pull switch three, which is this switch here, and make it bigger. So it's already on the configuration mode. Let's just step one, exit out one step. So we could do VTP mode. We can do transparent. Now, we could do VTP domain CCNA, right? And now we could do VTP password Cisco. Now, it's going to, we see we get in like setting device field database password to Cisco. We get that. Now we could do do show, do show VTP status. Status. See if it take it, right? So now we get the, oh, the VTP operating mode is in transparent. And that's what we, we set it to. So now we good. So we can create. On switch one, let's go back to switch one. So you notice that the configuration revision number is zero and all the switches from all the switches. Now we're gonna explain the configuration revision mode, I mean revision number increment by one every time a VLAN is added. So let's go ahead and create more VLAN on switch one. Switch one, make it bigger. Let's say VLAN and name, for instance, red, right? And um, VLAN, 20, no, let's X out a little bit. So say VLAN, 20, name, blue. Oh. Exit out, no VLAN, 20. So we could say VLAN, 20, and we could say name, blue. So we good. Exit out one step and say VLAN 30. And we could name that yellow. Name yellow. So we have those three VLANs. Now, if you verify the addition, the addition on the new VLANs. So let's do do show. So let's X out one step and say do show VLAN BR. Now you see we have VLAN 10 is red, VLAN 20 is blue, and VLAN 30 is yellow, and all are inactive. So we have VLAN 1 and 20, 30, 99, and 999. They are all VLANs that configure in switch 1. Now we're going to confirm all the configuration Changing using, we could do on switch one, we could do like do show VTP, VTP status, right? So what you see, VTP version one, configuration device nine, maximum VLANs, located 200 and something, domain, 
No, that is not okay. So now, what we can do is how many VLANs are configured on switch to those? Okay, right. So if we so observe the TP transparent mode on switch three is how is currently configured as a VTP transparent, right? Right. Now, currently, there are seven VLANs on switch three. So, switch three. I say. Let's say X. Oh, so okay. Do show V up. Do show VTP. Let's try VTP status. Get the VTP. Maybe I can on switch server. See something here. So let's say do show. VLAN be all. But I count the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So am I right? Yeah. So there's seven VLANs on switch three. The configuration revision number is zero because switch three is in transparent mode and VLAN configurations have not been changed since switch. Start up. Now, how would you change the number of the VLANs on switch three? That would be the question, guys. Now, while switch three is in transparent mode, it will not implement the VLAN information from the VTP server. So, all the VLANs changes either needs to be configured manually on, say, on switch three, can be changed to a VTP client to implement the VLAN information from the VTP server. Now, let's, let's change the VTP mode to client on switch three. Command, okay. VTP mode client. Okay. Now, if you use the, the show command to verify the change on the VTP, VTP starts. Now you see the mode, the version version. So the mode now is in client, right? And now we get the number of the VLAN existing is 10. You can see that. Now, note that the VTP advertisements are loaded throughout the management domain every five minutes. Or whenever a change occurs in the VLAN configurations to accelerate this process, you can switch between real-time mode and simulation mode until next round of updates. However, you may have to do this multiple times because this will only fall packets tracer plots by 10 seconds each time. So I'll tell you guys, you can change one of the client switches to transparent mode and then back to the client mode. I do is just use the switch port mode access and then use the command to set the access mode to the access link. Use the switch port mode, access VLAN, and the VLAN ID number. So now, 
on switch two, let's go ahead and assign the VLAN to ports on switch two and assign and using the assignment. Okay. So we have this, let's pull the switch two. So on switch two, oh my. On switch two, we could do NFS range. So G, we could do F. Let's see, F, yeah, fast internet. Zero slash one, two, eight. One to eight. Right? And then we could do switch port mode. Switch port mode access. Let's do switch port access VLAN. Access VLAN to 10. And let's do the same. Or port nine to sixteen. Nine to sixteen. And then we could do switch port mode. Access. Switch port mode access. And then we could do switch port mode access. VLAN 20. Just change the name, the VLAN. Now let's do the same for port 17 to 24. 17, 24. We could do switch port mode access. And then switch port mode access. VLAN 30, which is yellow. Now, we assign the VLAN to ports on switch three by using this, I mean, the same assignment. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the same for, for, for switch three. We could do and fast, oh, sorry, and fast. And fast. And fast, small, and fast, zero to zero, zero one to eight. Let's do that. What am I doing? Oh, and fast range. Oh, it doesn't give it to me. We lazy, so we don't want to type everything. Range. Now we could do switch port, switch, switch port mode access. And then we could do switch port mode, VLAN 10. Switch port, uh, um, I mean, switch port access VLAN 20. It says VLAN 10 first. And let's do the same for all the other ones. 
All we gotta do is just change this one nine to sixteen. I'm gonna go a little bit up. Okay, for this range, range, right, range. Okay, then make this mode access and swim. Make this twenty. Do the same for 30. Okay, I'm gonna make this 17 to 20. Oh, what am I doing? I'm gonna make this 17 to 24. Then switch port mode access, change port mode VLAN ID, switch port mode VLAN, switch port mode access VLAN 30. So now, if we verify the end to end connectivity from PC1 to PC5, we should be able to ping each other. So that's pretty much. Ah, uh, say PC5, PC0 to PC5. Say that's PC0 here, right? It's PC0, let's go to desk, and let's go to, not terminal, but command prompt. Let's say you say IP config, Oh, config slash all. Is it oh, config? Do config slash all. Why am I going wrong? This is says IP config slash all. Okay, so basically, what I mean to say here, let's check. Um, if I go here, okay, so there go the IP address of the diff, I mean, of the um, default gateway router. Let's check the interface, okay? So there go the IP of PC1, which is 10.1. If I were to ping 10.1 from PC5, I should be able to get a connection. And what am I doing? Yep. Terminal with command. If I go here and say ping 192.168, what was the P address there? Is it 10.0? Is it 10.1, I guess? Up, so we got a ping. So pretty much we have done a good job. Let's double check to make sure that was the IP address of it. Um, first. So it was 10.1, so we get it, that's the IP. So guys, and if you would go, so any PC can ping any other PC. So from PC one, let's check the IP conf, Let's check the IP address, so it's 20.1. Let's go on PC4 and see if we can ping 20.1. Let's just hold up 20 on desktop, terminal. What am I doing? Not terminal, PC4. Not terminal, but it's this. Okay. Now, if we're to ping 192.168.20.1. So, see, we got, a, we got a successful ping. So, pretty much, guys, we have successfully made all our configuration. This is how you configure. You configure VTP and DTP on a Cisco router.
Thank you so very much. I hope this lab was very helpful. If you are Haitian, if you haven't, if you are a student studying to become a network engineer, if you have in trouble on working with Cisco switches and routers, you could always leave a comment or reaching out to me and I'll be more than happy to help you out and assist you to any help that you may have. Again, guys, thank you so very much. I appreciate you. Bye-bye. I'll see you in the next lab. So stay tuned. Stop.